Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Death has lost his victory, and the grave has been denied. <laughs> Hallelujah! Jesus is alive. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord God. Thank you, Father. Yes, Lord. Thank you, Lord God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord God. And at this time, at this time, we're going to bring our hearts and minds, and it's, it's time to hear from the Lord. And we thank God for this time. This is what we came for. We came to worship and magnify him and to also to hear from him. Because the word takes us through the whole week and gives us strength. When Most of the time when God gives you something, it does, it's right for that week. One time, um, Pastor preached, and as soon as I walked out the door, it hit me in the face about chasing down lies. And he said, what did I just preach about? And I said, thank you, Lord. I just thank God for his word, and I want to thank God for the man of God who God has brought here today to bring forth the word. It's my brother, Apostle John Morton, and let me tell you a little bit about him. We grew up together and with love. I think me and him was the closest out of all of us, I truly believe. Sometimes we fall out, but we always get back together, and I thank God for that because it's a bond that cannot be broken no matter what. The enemy has tried and tried again, but, it has, but he has failed in yes. all his tribes because he has no power because we serve a God that is loving and that brings us back on one accord and brings us back to him yes, so I thank God we both have been through a lot but God has kept us the whole time and I thank him because God has placed the love in his heart that only comes from God that's only inspired yes. by God yes. yes Lord so we take no credit for anything but we praise our God for everything Hallelujah. Yes, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. And at this time, I just want to um, introduce to some presenters. How do you say it? <laughs> okay, but anyway, this is, uh, this is <laughs> okay. I would love to for you to hear, open up your ears to hear what God is saying. And this is my beloved brother, who, and who I am well pleased. <laughs> and I know God is more pleased. I yes, think of him as John yes. the Baptist because of that voice. That voice, he would cry in the wilderness, and he has that voice that has a cry for God, and I thank God for him in Jesus' name. Everyone stand on their feet for Apostle John Morton. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I, um, I was going to put on my jacket, wanted to hide my fat stomach, and, uh, Lord told me, he said, who are you? I didn't send you. I sent my spirit, and you agreed to carry it. Well, I put that jacket on, I'm probably gonna make you loosen the tie too. If you have come expecting to see someone that's worth anything above the cheap polyester suit that I'm wearing, you're in the wrong place. That ain't me. You've come to hear an eloquency of words that's going to finagle you into being willing to surrender your finances and everything else because you're happy. I'm not the one. But I say to you that if you've come with a belief that you can simply call me brother, because if you call me brother, then that means that we are one in the gospel that we have the same Father, we have the same plight, and the same endeavor to glorify God of all creation, then you're in the right place. Amen. Everyone have a seat. Amen. I was going to sing a song, and the Lord said, what do you have to do with your voice that hasn't already been done here? Deliver my word. The word that I'm going to give today, and I'm going to, I'm going to say this with a very stern endeavor. Let him run all he's going to run, but don't let him distract you. God's got him. I need your attention. I, I severely need your attention. And I need it because God cannot lie. He cannot come short of his promises but something's wrong with the product. The title of the sermon is The House That Love Built. Amen. Amen. And when I sought the Lord about the house that love had built, he told me, he said, I need you to understand something. 
My house is made up of the hearts and souls of all of them that declare the glory that I've given through my son. But the problem is, if you have a neighborhood where all the families are committed to one endeavor, uh, so to say a community, uh, what do you call it? In a, co a condo association. They keep a governing, they keep everything reined in so that everybody is on one channel. But then one family moves in and they start doing things their own way. And before you know it, another one comes in and they're doing things their own way. And before you know it, the neighborhood's going to hell. It's the same thing with the body of Christ. There, we are, the house that God built is the very body of Christ. But it's made up of many fellowships that are made up of many families, that are made up of many individuals. I need for you to understand that in this season, the Lord said that I am preempting the proclamation. Depart from me, ye that work iniquity, for I know you not. He said, I am sending a preempting of this right now because I need you to know if there's something in your life that has you off course. How could this be that we could walk in the fullness of Christ yes. to heal the sick, to bring sight to the blind, only to hear the Lord of glory say, depart from me, ye that work iniquity, for I know you not. God can't lie. Therefore, the time must come. And if the time is to come, we have to understand how this could happen to us. How? This is what I want to make clear to you today. How it is that we are going to be off course doing the works of the Father and cast away by Christ himself. I want you to go with me. I've got the last two weeks, the Lord has poured so much into me over this message. And I told him, I said, Lord, how in the world can I get all this across? He said, all of this is for you because you need it. But the pieces that I need for my people to hear now, I will reveal that to you in the moment. We are going to go through quite a bit of scripture, but we're going to do it quickly. Lord made it clear to me, he said, I am not going to let you finish this message because one thing that I'm working within you is the reality of the fact that the greatest thing you could do for me is learn when to shut up. <laughs> See, because I love the Lord, I love his word, and I love for him to, to touch the works of my heart. But sometimes I don't know when to accept that the Lord just left the building and the rest is me. And I don't want that today. It's important that all of you, be you in this fellowship or be you watching on Facebook or YouTube, I need this to be just God. Yes. People, go with me to Galatians 5. We're going to start at verse 1. Now remember, we're talking about something in our love that has caused our walk with God to be compromised to a point where even the Lord of glory could cast us away. There's a lot of scripture here because we're going all the way down to verse 26. But I'll make my point in the end. Stand fast therefore in the liberty wherewith Christ hath made us free and be not entangled again in the yoke of bondage. Behold, I, Paul, say unto you that if ye be circumcised, Christ shall profit you nothing. For I testify again to every man that is circumcised that he, he is a debtor to do the whole law. Yes. Christ is become of no effect unto you. Whosoever of you are justified by the law, you are fallen by grace. Yes. For we through the Spirit wait for the hope of righteousness by what? Faith. Again, I read verse 5. For we, through the Spirit, wait for the hope of righteousness by faith. For in Jesus Christ, neither circumcision availeth anything, nor uncircumcision. But faith which worketh 
by love. I'm going to stop right there for a second. There was, a, there was once a pastor who was in a very dire straight position spiritually. They were ready to shut their fellowship down. And the Lord sent to this pastor a couple and gave this couple to that pastor. And they poured out everything that God told them to do. And they watched her spirit stand back up. They watched her back straighten. They watched her begin to run again. They watched her begin to minister in ways she had never ministered before. And one day, she said to them, I just can't believe that anybody could love me this much. I'm just waiting for the ball to fall because this ain't, this ain't normal. This is uh, too much to, to believe. Yes. <laughs> If you can't believe love in your brother in front of you, how are you going to believe the love of God that you can't see? But that was the word that was spoken to that couple. Eventually, God removed them because when, when God sends someone to show you unhindered love, love believes all things. Love accepts all things. Love doesn't vaunt itself, but it lifts another. But if you don't have real love, you can't even believe love coming from another. And do you know what the enemy does? He tells them you better get them before they get you. And that's what happened to that couple. The point of the matter is, is our love real? I just read a scripture and it said faith worketh by what? By love. If you have an automobile, God gave me a vision yesterday, and in the vision, I took an automobile to someone, a brand new car, took it off of the back of a flatbed, the people put it there in the driveway, and I knocked on the door, and they came, and I said, I got something special for you. They came to the, out to the driveway, and I gave them the key, and they said, oh my God, oh my God, you bought me a car, let me drive it. They went to get I said, oh, wait a minute, there ain't no gas in it. There's no gas. Faith worketh by what? So many declare their faith. They declare their commitment to God. And the faith that they bear, which they believe in, but they have no love. But faith worketh by love, like the car worketh by gas. The car on the curb with no gas is nothing. Faith without love. It's nothing. You have it. You proclaim it. You declare it. But when a time of tribulation, trial, and error come, yes, sir. the faith you have fades because it has no fuel. It has no fuel. Mm. Our, too many of us, our faith is based on the belief in what we believe we can get from God. Faith is not about what we can get from God. Faith is a belief in all that he established in us. You're talking to one who came from the fivefold of Satan, crackheaded, alcoholic, manipulated, lying fornicator. I never believed I would make it to 50 years of age. I had no reason to believe it. Why? My love didn't know who God was. It didn't know what he had really established in me. I could not see where all of this really came from. I look at the fellowships and I see my wife and I, we live in Florida, but our membership is here 900 miles away in Agape. Why? Because I've entered too many houses and seen messengers selling bad product. If you bought a Rolex worth $5,000, and you paid $5,000 for it. The last thing you want to admit after having it for 10 years and short it everybody is it's junk. It's not real. Something about it is fake. But you know what? If you had the slightest inclination you want to know, you're going to take it back to the manufacturer, see if it meets their standard. 
because they're going to give you the truth. What's going to happen today if you take what you say is a, the faith that you have in God, if you take it back to him and he tells you it's inoperable because it's not running on love, it's running on lust. The lust of the flesh. The scriptures say, hold on a second, let me get ahead of myself just a little bit. James 4, 1 through 6. From whence cometh wars and fighting among you? Come they not hence even of your lust that is in your members? Jesus. We can't get along because we want something. We always want something. Always. Ye lust and you have not. You kill. You desire to have and you cannot obtain. You fight and you war, yet you have not. But get this. It goes on in verse 2 to say, because ye ask not. So the scripture is telling us if we ask God for something, we're going to get it. How often are we asking and not getting it? Too often, right? Too often. Let's see why. Verse 3, you ask not and receive not because you ask amiss that you may consume it upon your lust. You're not asking out of the spirit of love. All you're thinking about is what you want to consume something. You want to consume the, the ability to brag about what you got. We pray and ask the Lord for things. My wife and I sought him about where were we moving. We're looking at apartments. We decided we would pay $1,500 for an apartment. And God told us, don't you take nothing unless it's dropped in your hand. Because what I've got for you, it's going to be for you. And nobody's going to know about it. The Lord gives us a house that still can't nobody find it on Google. We can't even find it. We put it in GPS. It pops up a corner somewhere a block and a half away. So when the house was in the ads, nobody could find it. Yeah. We get the house for $1,100, three bedroom, two bath garage with a swimming pool. But we were ready to pay fifteen hundred for a house, for an apartment. But we didn't desire to consume anything with our lust. We were looking for a three bedroom because we were asking the Lord, should we take in foster children? We could live with a two bedroom, and we were happy to accept an apartment. But we were not desiring to go find some huge house and say, yeah, look what we got, because it's not what God. God does not give you. Things for you to glory in yourself. Amen. Yes, Lord. We, we want to talk about look what the Lord did. My business was number one in Tampa five years ago. And it was by my works. I did everything to make it number one. I was making money. and couldn't figure where it was going. Could not figure where in the world it was going. My wife and I now, we went back to Tampa in 2014, Christmas of 2014. We had nothing. We sold everything before we went out there. And as for her, she gave up a 30-year career position to trust God. And someone told her, a pastor told her, well, I tell you this much, you better than me because I wouldn't have done it. Ain't no way in the world the Lord could have convinced me to do that. Where, see, that's faith, but no love. Mm -hmm. Faith worketh by what? Love. But here's the thing. What is real love? I, I, wanna, I wanna jump off for a second here. Let's look at what happens when God sends love, undaunted love, full love. Uh, Pastor, I'm trying to think of the scriptures where it's in um, Isaiah. He said, a root shall come out of the stem of Jesse. And he talks about the things that he will impart in him. Can you remember the scripture? Yes. Could you get that for me? Can you get that scripture for me? Everything has ingredients. 
a cake has ingredients. There's one thing that I want to show you that God imparted in Christ that we don't have. Love has attributes, and if there's one attribute missing from love, it ain't love. It's now become what it is that you want. Isaiah, Isaiah 11, 10, see, I am not the one that knows scripture and verse, but the scriptures say, I've locked thy word in my heart, away in my heart that I might not sin against thee. But see, see why we need each other? That's why we need each other. We're on an equal plane in here. There is no pulpit and there is no pulpit and congregation. We are the brethren of the gospel. Let me know when you got it, Pastor. I want you to read it. From the roots of the branch bear fruit. Let's make sure that's the right one. It is Isaiah. Where are you at? Read it again. You want to start the first verse? Yeah. And there shall come forth a rod out of the stem of Jesse, a branch shall grow out of his roots. Keep going. And the spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him, and the spirit of wisdom and understanding, and the spirit of counsel, and might, the spirit of knowledge, and the spirit and the fear of the Lord and shall make him a quick understanding of the fear of the Lord. Okay. Well, were you going to say something, sister? Okay. Now, now here's what I want you to understand about what he just said. Read the attributes again, each one of them. Wisdom, Wisdom. Understanding. knowledge, understanding. Where is the fear of the Lord with us? It said that he will give, also give him the fear of the Lord and the understanding of the fear of the Lord. This is where we failed. This is where we failed. We have no fear of the Lord. And when we look at 2 Timothy 3, it says that perilous times shall come. But haven't times been perilous since the day that Adam was kicked out of the garden? Well, not among the people of God, it wasn't. But today it is. Times are perilous because we have become everything but what we're supposed to be. And in verse 5, I believe it says, uh, having a form of godliness, but denying the power thereof. For men shall be lovers of their own selves, covetous, boasters, proud, blasphemous, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, without natural affections. Truce breakers, false accusers, incontent, fierce despisers of those that are good. This is why my fellowship is 900 miles away from home. Because that's how far I had to go to find a true man of God. One that I knew had a fear for the Lord. One that I know doesn't despise another man of the gospel because he's higher than him or doing greater works, but he rejoices with them. Amen. I had to find a shepherd that I knew had the authority to speak the ordinance of God over me in correction. Because we all need a word of correction. Amen. You know how often I go to the Lord about something, and he'll tell me, look, I'm not having it. And I'll keep asking him, well, Lord, um, you know, I, I, I'm going to do this. And, you know, if you got a problem with it, let me know. And he'll stand there with his arms folded and looking at me like, you heard what I said to you. We hear God, but we don't listen. Because we think that love is a feeling. Love is not a feeling. Love is a spirit. And every spirit can do nothing but what God designed it to do. So if love is a spirit, how is it that we love but we backbite? 
How is it that we love, but we had this issue with talking about one another behind their back for a purpose other than finding out how to lift that person up? How is it that we say we love, but yet we kill? The Ten Commandments said, thou shalt not kill. Do you know that when you sit together and you talk about a member, and they know you're talking about them, sometimes we'll talk about them, but they won't even hide it. Laugh in their face. You're killing their spirit. There's no love there. Because love was not designed to do those kind of things. So how can we say we're walking in love when the things that we manifest are not of the spirit of love? Let's, let's go on with our reading. You know, this is, it's, this is a hard message. It's not meant to judge anyone, but we need to know what's hindering us. Yeah. I don't know about you, but when I get to the gate, I want them to open that gate and the hosts of heaven go up in a roar of celebration for all that I did in obedience behind me. I don't want to hear a couple of folk clapping. <laughs> Because many of us are going to get in on, on, the, the, on the sound of three or four claps. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Because we failed. See, we were talking in the beginning of this, uh, these chapters of Galatians about circumcision. And if you think circumcision availeth much, then you're, you're dead to the whole law. Let me tell you something. This is not going to be easy. Most pastors, most uh, shepherds, and I do say most, because the word says great is the way that leads to damnation. But now is the path that is right. Many of these fellowships are selling you faulty goods. They're not selling you the fullness of the love that we must have in God. They're selling you the empire that they built unto themselves. And don't come up in there as a lottery winner driving a Rolls Royce and, and got a, issues. Because they're not going to preach against your issue. They're going to keep you there. They're going to do what they have to do to keep you. That's why it's so important, I'm telling you now, as a fellowship, that you hold on to the hand of God. That you look for what is right. Who was it that was kicked out of being king because he was pleasing the people? He knew what the people wanted. Mm -hmm. What is this? What the, Sam, Samuel came to, to, and asked Saul, what have you done? This wasn't what God told you to do. Well, you know, I would have did what God told me to, but the people, they wanted something different. That's right. Do you know how hard it is for a pastor when the people have an ulterior emotional desire? Not a spirit. A spirit of love is going to follow what's right with God. Not him. If you come in here because you love Pastor Renzel, you're all in trouble. You need to be here because you love God. Because you believe God is here. You believe God is with him. You believe that when you come here, you are bringing the Spirit of God even with you. Hallelujah. Thank and if that is so, then why do we treat the Good Shepherd as if he ain't nobody but Renzel? There are many pastors that go through it. The people, they, they see the Spirit of the Lord working in that person, and it lights them up. But then after they get to know the leader, they want to treat him like the human that he is, instead of continuing to honor him as a shepherd that has the responsibility over their soul. We've got to find the lacks in our love, people, because love is not an emotion. It's not something that we can turn on and off. It's not something that's designed to acquire the feeling that we want from another. Love is a spirit that God set over his people so that we would be an image of who he was, is, and shall forever be. So let's go on. Uh, we, we are at, let's go back to verse 6. For in Christ Jesus, neither circumcision availeth anything nor uncircumcision, but faith which worketh by love. You did run. You did run this race. 
Who hindered you? How did you get off course from the clarity of what you understood? Something has happened. Now, I want you to understand something about this concept of circumcision. I want to connect it to your, your life today. Circumcision was a physical act, right? And people went and got circumcised, and yes, oh, I'm circumcised. We run around bragging about the church we go to or the ministry we're a part of and the money we give it. But if people caught you at your darkest points in life, they wouldn't know that you know God. Your righteousness is based on what you believe you did to make you right. And that's not where we're supposed to be. We're supposed to be in a place where faith establishes the righteousness, not acts. And guess what? Faith will manifest the works. Hallelujah. But when you think works manifest faith, it doesn't go that way. We first must walk in a fullness of faith. And faith working by what? So how are you going to run a car if it's out of gas? Hallelujah. You can't. Let's go on. Nine. A little leaven. Wait a minute. Verse eight. This persuasion cometh not of him that calleth you. A little leaven leaveneth the whole lump. I have confided in you through the Lord that you will be known otherwise minded, but that he that troubleth you. In other words, the spirit that is causing you to not go the way that you should go. He said, I, 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 will, I will that it, they shall be cut off. They shall even be under his judgment, whosoever he be. And it's not always talking about a person. It's a spirit. And I, brethren, if I yet preach circumcision, why do I yet suffer persecution? Then is the offense of the cross ceased. Listen closely from verse 12. I would that they were even cut off, which trouble you. For brethren, you have been called unto liberty. Only do not use that liberty as an occasion to the flesh, but by love serve one another. Jesus. Do not use your liberty as an occasion to the flesh. Oh, you know what? Well, the Lord understand. The Lord know my heart, but that's just to get on my nerves. She ain't no good. I don't read the study. Do not use your liberty as an occasion for the flesh, but by love serve one another. Yes, you know, I when I see somebody that's just, I mean, just whacked out off the train, I'm like, Lord, help us. Because it ain't just her, it ain't just him, it's us. Because I'm a part of that body. Do you know what it means when you're running a marathon and your pinky toe gets a cramp? The whole body about to get shut down off of one joint on a pinky toe. I don't know if you all ever had a cramp on a pinky toe, but trust me, you're not going to shift that way over to the inside of that foot. It's just not going to work. You're going to have to shut that thing down and get the shoe off, and the whole body gonna have to work to get that one piece together. But that's love, that's what love does. Love believes all things, trusts all things, endures all things. It does not see to, to its own desire, but the need of all. We're missing it. We're missing it. our fellowships, can't even, we, the, we just read in Timothy, without natural affections. Yes. We got an automobile, we see that sister sitting over there on the bus stop, dark clouds coming, you just out of fellowship, praising and glorifying the Lord of all creation, but you don't have enough natural affection to care to give her a ride. You passed right by her. That's what it said when it said without natural affections. That's right. That's right. Yes. God set that kind of love in us. Let's go on. Let's, re let's reiterate on verse 13. For brethren, you have been called unto liberty. Only use not liberty for an occasion to the flesh, but by love serve one another. For all the law is fulfilled in one word, even in this, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. But if you bite and devour one another, take heed that you be not consumed one of another. 
This I say then, walk in the spirit and you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. Amen. That's, I wasn't finished, but I, the Lord just said, stop. I told you that I was going to speak until the Lord told me to. I ain't nowhere near finished. And God said, that's it, shut up. Come on, Pastor. Praise. Give the Lord praise. Give God praise. Y'all to give God some praise. Hallelujah. Come on, give God praise. Come on and give the Lord praise. Hallelujah. Come on and give the Lord some praise in this place. How do do y'all speak English? Everybody here speak English? Frankish Deutsch? Habla Espanol? Parlez-vous français? Hallelujah. 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 But that's the same word in every language. Hallelujah. 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 He could have preached another hour. If you didn't get that scripture he just said, you didn't get the message. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You understand? Hallelujah. Walk in the spirit and you will not fulfill the lust of the flesh. If I'm in Chicago, I'm not in New York. Hallelujah. 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 Can I explain it? Hallelujah. Is that any, any better? You still speaking English? Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you. If you're walking in the spirit, you're not in the flesh. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. It's just that he said, my yoke is easy and my burden. We Man complicates it. We put toll boots. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We put interest fees and amen. Hallelujah. We charge taxes and amen. As you come into the door, you got to pay this much. Hallelujah. Door fees and prizes. Amen. But he made it so easy. The Bible says even a fool and a wayfarer man won't error. Won't error. Yes. Uh, for, hallelujah. Walk in the spirit and you will not fulfill. Anybody understand that? Yes. Anybody Amen. need that broken down? Amen. Anybody need CMZ at the service at, for that one? Hallelujah. Walk in the spirit and you, you, you. you. I looked at when we was talking about uh, Deuteronomy when Moses was given the Bible class before he was about to die to the, to the, to the next generation. And he kept saying ye and when ye came, ye in the wilderness, and ye uh, against the Ammonites, and the, you know, and all the different tribes they had to fight, and I'm like, that wasn't them. That was their parents. Why he kept saying ye? Because you're their generation. Yes. And this is why we have because of you, because of your parents. And his message was basically, don't do what your parents did. Don't fall into the same <coughs> traps and conditions that your parents fell into. Yes. And so when we fall into the flesh, it's us. Yes, yes. Walk yes. in the spirits and ye. <laughs> we, me, I, I wish somebody lift their hand and say, ye is me. <laughs> ye is me. Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. We talked about this morning during an intercessory. Isaiah. And he woe unto them to drink, drink strong, drink. Whoa, whoa he just, he just turned them up. Judgment, he cut me with a sword. He that had turned, he was trimming the bushes. He would just turn down them hedges and hallelujah, hallelujah. Woe unto you, you, woe unto you, woe unto you, woe unto you. Hallelujah. And anybody walk through the door, whoa unto y'all. Hallelujah, hallelujah. But when he got into the presence of the Lord, hallelujah, he said, woe is me. I am unclean. I dwell in the midst of unclean people. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. And that's when the angel went to them and got the tongs and the, and the coals and singed his lips. And the cry was made, who shall I send? And who shall go for me? And Isaiah, he's ready now. Hallelujah. He's woe and he turned everybody up. Hallelujah. But he said, yeah, my Lord. Wasn't he preaching a minute ago? You think he was going in. You think he was in ministry then. Hallelujah. But he said, here I am. I go where? You just got finished preaching. Whoa. Wasn't you preaching a minute ago? No, he hadn't started preaching until he'd been purged. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Faith worketh in what? 
Hallelujah. <laughs> you know, worketh by love. Amen. Hallelujah. So if you don't have the right attachments and the proper, y'all ever got them toys? Amen. And, and then you find out you needed batteries, you needed this, you needed that. Man, I'm like, I know where am I gonna, how am I gonna do this? Without what I don't, you got to buy this, and you got to go buy that, and go get that, and then you get some other stuff you got to get, Amen. And so that's how it works with man, but with God, He gives you everything you need, Amen, Amen. 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 This man is giving us a powerful word this Amen. morning, Amen. 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 Let's give God praise for the word. Amen. Come on, give God praise for the word of God. Come on, give the Lord some praise. I wish somebody give the Lord some praise. Hallelujah for this word today. Give the Lord some praise. He deserves. To him be glory, honor, dominion, and power, both now and forever. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Amen, hallelujah, hallelujah. It's more than just, this man came 900 miles. He came all the way from Florida. He didn't come to preach. I didn't, he didn't say, Pastor, God told me to preach in your church on Sunday. We'll be up there. Amen. Open up, you know, the preacher's talk is called, put me up. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'll be there on Sunday. Put me up, preacher. Hallelujah. Y'all know she know preacher language. She's shaking her head. That's how they talk. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That's how they talk. Hallelujah. But he said, no, he coming for the ministry. Amen. Hallelujah. So I say, well, if you're here. You might as well. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. So he's given us a powerful word of wisdom and understanding. Amen. To the, I told y'all, we can't be called agape and be hating. Hallelujah. Be frowning on folk. Hallelujah. Your name is love. You got love in the name. You can't be showing on lemons. Hallelujah. You can't be looking at people like, you're like, hi, hey, how you doing? So nice to see you. Hallelujah. That's agape. Hallelujah. Because if he did it, mm, if he treated us like we deserve, Oh, Lord, have mercy. Have mercy. We None of us would be here. Hallelujah. We'd be under here. Hallelujah. I'm about right over there. Hallelujah. Bear me under the dirt. Amen. Hallelujah. But we're grateful to the Lord that he did not treat us as our sins deserve. Amen. But he showed love toward us. And that's the same love we should show one toward another. Amen. Come on. I wish somebody give God praise because I keep talking. He was wise enough and humble under God enough. Hallelujah. But I'm, I'm, you don't speak to my daddy. Hallelujah. You come in his house. Hallelujah. You don't give him praise, honor, and glory. I dare you walk in my daddy's house. You're going to 7 Eleven to get some chewing gum. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. When you come in God's house, get something from him. Hallelujah. Come on and get something from him. And don't leave here. Don't leave here. I hear the spirit of my father, Bishop Robert. Don't leave, leave here without it. Hallelujah. He had about four or five Monday night prayers. We had one at six, uh, eight o'clock. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He prayed for you half an hour on the altar. And when we all, that's at nine o'clock. And around about 10 o'clock when they get, everybody get their testimonies. And they get, and sometimes we were scared to give it to Bishop at the end of the service. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Around about 9, 30, 10 o'clock. Uh, Bishop, would you like to have something to say? Uh, there's somebody in here. You came here, and you didn't get what, what you wanted from the Lord. That's Bishop Henry William Roberts right there. Yeah. Now, come here now. Right over there. He blind. Right over here in this area. Over Y'all know Bishop would do that now. <laughs> right over here. You didn't get what you came for. And all of a sudden, you see somebody stand up, start walking down. <laughs> start walking to the altar. That's about 11 o'clock right there. Because <laughs> he ain't moving. He ain't, he ain't leaving. Some of you try to get up, he'll pull you back down to the altar. Hallelujah. Because, because, and really, that's not his fault. It's, it's the believer's fault. Yeah. Or the, non, the, the yeah. act of non-belief's fault. Amen. Because the minute you believe, it happens immediately. It happens immediately. But don't dare not come into God's house and leave without what you need from God today. Yeah. Uh, and every time you walk in here, enter his gates with thanksgiving. Enter his courts with praise. Be thankful unto him and bless his name. Amen. That song says you're going to lead the way you came in Jesus. Let me check this one. Let me check the next one out. I'm going to check the next one out. Let's see what happens. Y'all just put your hands together and give God some praise. Let's see that song. Amen. Amen. Give God, give God his praise. Can I say that? Come on, give God his Give God his praise. Come on.
Agape Worldwide Ministries and Pastor Renzo James Fields invites you to come worship with us in Springfield, Virginia. We're located 7240 FNG Boudinot Drive in Springfield, Virginia. Call 703-372-1174. Agape Worldwide Ministries. Real love, real people, real church. 